Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur Billio. We're going to have a look at whether for next 10 to 14 days for today's Spur Billio. Day 10 will take us to 6th of March and we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We extend the GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for March itself. And uh, I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just say the first video today for 6 a.m. upload. We've also reached May Friday. We've got the ECMWF for two day slash. Six weeks, we're going to be coming up for you around 7 p.m. this evening. And if all of that wasn't up, we're going to be live streaming uh, after 10 o'clock tonight, around 10.30. So it's one of those crazy days for Gav, where I'm uh, running around like I had this chicken all day long. Um, but no, it's all good. And, uh, and so that's all coming up later on. Uh, so check out all the videos and live stream later on. Like to do that. Like, share, and subscribe on the video. Thank you, so much, Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Got to put on just forty subscribers now. So moved quite quickly yesterday. Um, no, so got to put on just forty subscribers now to get ourselves to um 15.6k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. And uh, let's push on to 15.6k. Ultimate target is 16k. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. But that's like the next sort of uh, big target. But um, 15.6k is the winning target, you know. So please give us a sub. Thanks so much, everybody, for doing that. I hope you have a lovely Friday as well. All right, let's have a look then. Uh, so we're going to start our sentence chat today. It's going to be a little bit of a shortened uh, 10 to 14 day. Uh, um, we've had a look, enough, you know, with the strat, I think, over the past few days. There's not really much change today. We'll have another look in one of the videos over the weekend. But I thought we'd leave the stratosphere stuff out, um, you know, out, out of this uh, video. So we're going to start our sentence chat. Just need to tick down else slightly to 6.8. That's still three degrees above average, mode. That's the reason to just say to 25. That will carry on to down over the next few days. So finish it up somewhere in the upper fives or, or low sixes. Uh, I would have thought these are a GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Great Malvern today. So uh, the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Great Malvern. We're starting off about average at the moment, but it's going to be turning colder into the weekend. So a pretty chilly spell setting up over the weekend and into next week. Through next week, the upper air temperatures then start to uh, lift up a little bit for a few days into the like, opening days of March. Um, and then we still have all of the scatter, you know, so what's going to happen as we go further on into March? Will it get cold as these ensemble members down here are doing? When it stay mild, as these ensemble members up there are doing, it's still all to be revealed. It's still all to play for loads of scatter there. Um, you can clearly see that the overall GFS is trending colder from around the 5th of March onwards. The white line is beyond southern beam. That's going quite significantly under the red line, actually, quite significantly under the uh, long term third year average. So, the general thrust of the GFS is to turn things colder, but there's enough scatter there. And it's far enough out to, you know, raise quite a bit of doubt and uncertainty about that. Precipitation-wise, there's going to be lots of dry weather over the uh, next week to 10 days. It looks like it gets more unsettled as we go from the first week and into the second week of March. But as ever, that is a long way off. Temperature anomaly, it's on the 24th of February to the 4th of March, it's going to be colder than average. So, you know, talking about cold weather in March, actually the next few days are going to be colder than average, particularly so for England and Wales. Most parts of uh, Western Europe are also looking quite cold, you'll notice. And the precipitation, <coughs> excuse me, precipitation anomaly from the 24th of February to the 4th of March, they're coming out drier than normal. The latest wind from back from Earth and Nonschool.net shows that bringing in a chilly northerly wind today. So, uh, yeah, we're changing the air mass, you know, in the second half this week, and uh, temperatures have lowered. Right, so this is our chart data is looking at. This is the you can make your run for big dive on Monday. High pressure well and truly in over top of the country, and the high pressure sticking around then through. That's going to be another anti cyclonic week, another week dominated by high pressure right up 
to the end of uh, next week. Yes, this is Friday, this, um, Friday 3rd of March. Still with that area of high pressure in control remaining high and dry. Is that high pressure going to go up to Greenland? Is it going to go into retrograde um, and to bring us very cold northerly winds or not? You know, it's still inconclusive, Matt, isn't it? Certainly got a bit of warm air eviction going on. With these southerlies, you know, have got some warm air advection, which you would think will promote the ridge uh, to build northwards. But up to that point, it's still inconclusive up to the 3rd of March. It could go either way. Icon, uh, again, show high pressure in control of the weather on uh, Monday. That'll be a relatively cold ridge of high pressure too. High pressure sticks around for a week. Bit of an easy wind in the south will make it feel quite cold down there. There could be further... Frost and, you know, frost and fog, night and morning, that kind of stuff. Um, and the high pressure remaining in control of weather right way up to the end of next week. I can't also get us to uh, midday on Friday next week. And still, at that point, high pressure is in charge. It's quite a cold ridge, but it isn't going up to Greenland up to that point of bringing in anything notably cold. The GFS midnight run, again, with high pressure dominating the weather on Monday, and we're high and dry throughout next week. The uh, GFS is trying to get that high pressure up to Greenland. You'll notice that it is sort of uh, retrogressing, ridging up to Iceland and uh, Greenland there. Northerly blast into Scandinavia by uh, next weekend. That's Saturday, the 4th of March. We've got some very cold northerlies setting over Scandinavia. We're on the edge and the periphery of that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me once more. <coughs> Dear me. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> High pressure. Um, at day 10, still dominating the weather. The cold, keeping the coldest of the air at bay just to our east and uh, northeast there. And um, then beyond that, we find that the high pressure begins to sink south as the low pressure comes in off the Atlantic. So the GFS just turns milder and wetter and windier for the second week of March until it pushes this area of low pressure through. And then colder air starts to dig in on the back of that area of low pressure. But no, no, no notable cold outbreak with the GFS midnight run in the next couple of weeks there. The GFS 6Z, uh, <coughs> again, shows high pressure once more, well and truly in control of the weather throughout next week, dominating uh, conditions up to around day 10. Low pressure starts breaking in from off Atlantic, very cold across northern, northeast Europe, by the way, with that cold air being kept at bay as these areas of low pressure start coming in from off Atlantic. Increasingly unsettled look to GFS 6Z, as we go from the first week into the second week of March, and starting to turn colder as well, the jet stream and the areas of low pressure deep southwards. But again, no notable cold outbreak with the GFS 6 m If you enjoyed the video, then please say you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we thank you so very much, everyone, for doing that. The GM, again, with high pressure dominating uh, throughout most of next week, will be a bit more of an easy wind in the south compared to the other models, though, and that will make it feel quite cold down in the south. But overall, high pressure continues in control. Where we don't have a 216-hour chart there, by the way. Um, no, at day 10, uh, low pressure is pushing through from off the Atlantic. Cold air trying to get in from the north as that low pressure moves through. It's possible we'll start pulling some colder air um, from the north. But, again, we'll have to wait and see. And then the ECM shows high pressure in control of the weather through next week against the week where we are high and dry. We head up toward day 10. High pressure is trying to reach northwards. Very cold air plunging south into Scandinavia. We're on the edge, on the periphery of that. Um, so again, inconclusive whether the high pressure would successfully get itself to Greenland and set up a block and pull in the very cold air from the north or whether we would keep that cold air uh, you know, over the other side of the North Sea and, and the Norwegian Sea um, over Northern Europe. We would have to wait and see a few more days further on. This is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Um uh, Not going to be much to see here with so much high pressure domination. So uh, we'll just quickly move on from that, I think. And uh, we'll go to the options on the table. So these are the options on the table with the ECM ensembles today from the Isaac Met Office for Day 10. Gets us to the 6th of March. 24 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure 
over and slightly to the north of the country. Low pressure is away to the northeast. We're on the edge and on the periphery of that blocking area of high pressure. So mainly dry, a little bit chilly, but, you know, not, not really cold. And then we've got 17 uh, just here with high pressure, more focused towards Greenland. Lower pressure, deeper over Scandinavia. And we've got a little bit more of a northerly influence with that. And then 10, look quite cold, wintry, mid-Atlantic ridge. We're blocking around Greenland, low pressure to our east and, and uh, southeast, whatnot. And uh, winds will be coming in from a cold northeasterly direction with that. And then in two week time, these are the options that we've got. And it will get us to the 11th of March, 21 members of the ECM ensemble. Pretty much where we are right now, high pressure over, just slightly to our north. So main dry again, about a little bit chilly, but not overly cold 17 with a proper block over greenland and low pressure then sitting over and to the east of the country that will bring the wind in from a uh, potentially very cold northeast direction so that's the co most cold the wintry option and then we've got 13 just here with low pressure to our east and northeast and out to the atlantic high pressure is to our south blocking around green all sorts going on there um, so we're trying to bring colder air from the north, but also milder air trying to be maintained. And I suppose if there's a battle, then you might get some snow out of that. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a complicated scenario, um, that. Uh, right, finally, the service be true for March. This is the latest uh, 700 millibar height anomaly uh, from the CFS for March. Hang on. Yeah, 700 millibar height anomaly um, for uh, March. And it's showing, like, a lot of blocking above average height sitting over and to the north of the country. Low pressure is across much of the continent as well. So presumably we're bringing wind from the east and the northeast most of the time. Uh, look at this, quite a cold month across uh, much of Europe in March. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, we're, our temperature anomaly for the UK and Ireland is no better than average, but you'd expect some cold weather at times at the very least. And uh, also a drier than normal month is indicated there for March. So a colder, drier month courtesy of that northern blocking. We shall see. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so very much, everybody. The dear Matt, drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't get to tell friends about Gals Worthies. Ask them to subscribe and uh, help get us to 15.6k. We thank you so very much, everybody. Um, but yeah, man, don't forget to ding the bell as well. Ding the bell. And uh, when you subscribe, you'll be notified when we're releasing content and live streaming. And as I say, thank you so very much, everybody, for uh, doing that. Right, so uh, that's video number three. Don't dust it free. Uh, we will be back later on uh, with the ECM WF42 day slash six weeks. Okay, but we're coming up around seven inch this evening. And then we're live streaming after 10 p.m. tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to have the 6 a.m. Uh, forecast. We'll have the second and final spring 2023 season one round. That's going to get 15 long range ones together from the World's Leading Forecast Centre to see what we'll show for at spring for the final time. This season, that is ahead of the spring forecast, which will be released at Gaz Weather Vids uh, on Sunday. There'll be weekend forecasts as well tomorrow, and also a uh, 10 to 14 day breaking video too. So, keep checking back to the channel for more, and uh, we'll see you either for the live stream a little bit later on or for one of our uploads um, over the weekend. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon, and for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.